This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on chapters 2.7 and 2.8 in the book Statics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's topics are position vectors and force vector directed along a line. So after today, you should be able to represent a position vector in Cartesian form from some geometry given in the problem and to represent a forced vector directed along a line. First, we'll go over some applications. We'll talk about position vectors and how to write a force vector along a line, and then we'll do some example problems. But first, some applications. Here's the large ship, and you can see it's mooring line here. Let me get a pin out. You can see the mooring line here. And um, it's connected to the bow. And what are the forces in that mooring line? And what direction do they act in? Well, you may have already figured this out, but there's a position vector R here. And it defines the vector between this point and this point. Well, we can know how to get a unit vector from that. We did that in the uh, last uh, lecture. So since this is a chord, it's in tension, so the force vector is also directed along that same position vector. So we're going to use the position vector to create a unit vector in the same direction as that position vector, and then multiply it by the magnitude of f to get f in Cartesian form. So that's the whole lecture basically in a nutshell, but we'll go over it again. So here's another application. We have a a awning it's held up by uh, three chains and what are the forces in those chains and why do we care well we care because we have to design those chains so they don't fail so um, let's move on and talk about position vectors now in this section I'll introduce the concept of a position vector it will be shown that this vector is of importance when you are formulating a Cartesian force vector directed between any two points in space. And as we said earlier, throughout this book, we use a right-handed coordinate system to reference locations in space. And we also use a convention followed in many technical books, which says that the positive x-axis is directed upward, which, which means that it measures the height of an object or the altitude of a point. And therefore, the x, y axes lie in the horizontal plane. Now, we have a position vector r. It's defined as a fixed vector which locates a point in space with respect to another point. So in this case, it's locating the point b with respect to the point a. Now, this vector is uh, denoted by the symbol r. And as a matter of convention, sometimes we add subscripts to that vector. And now uh, this is very important. So you see that double subscript here, R, A, B. Well, what that means is that I'm on the first letter looking at the second letter. So I'm on A looking at B. And you can see that because the head of the vector is on B. So when you see something like R, A, B, just think I'm on the first point looking at the second point. Okay, now sometimes you see R with only one subscript, like RA or RB. Now these are in bold, these are vectors. Well, all that means is that uh, this vector is the position of B with respect to the origin. And likewise, this is the position vector of A with respect to the origin. So that would look like that, and RB would look like that. Okay, just some nomenclature to get out of the way. Now, it turns out that um, we do a little vector algebra here and say that uh, Ra plus R is equal to Rb. Uh, we can solve for uh, Ra. I mean, we can solve for R. And what we get is that when we want to calculate the position vector between any two points in space, we, uh, let me erase, uh, that so you can see it. 
I'm on A looking at B. Well, the way you do it is you take the X coordinate of B and subtract the X coordinate of A, and that'll give you the I direction. And likewise for the Y and the Z uh, coordinates. So what to remember here is that RAB means I'm on A looking at B. If I want to calculate what that vector is, then I know, you know the position of B and the position of A. I know these two vectors. I can get it directly by subtracting B, subtracting A from B. So it's kind of like the reverse, right? This is AB and this is BA. So that's just one way to remember it. Um, we can also form these components directly. You don't have to use this formula down here. Uh, you can just start at A and envision yourself getting over to B. So in that case, you know, you construct there's a box that you can see uh, 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 that you can see here and you can just travel along the sides of the box to get the um, the direction the, the length in that particular direction so you can just go from here and over to here and then up so either way you can do it um, but it's critical to get it right um, we need to have the direction in, in the right way if you do it backwards the direction comes out in the opposite direction, and that's not good. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about forced vectors directed along a line. And as I indicated earlier, <clears throat> these problems um, require you to understand what a position vector is, and then to create a unit vector from that position vector. We did that in the last lecture, remember? Um, the unit vector in the B direction from A to B is just the vector R divided by its magnitude. And this is a vector, and that's a vector. So this is a very important thing, a unit vector. And once you had that unit vector, we can just say, oh, F, this force is directed along that chain because it's in tension has to be equal to the magnitude of F times that unit vector UB. And that's why it's so powerful that we need to generate these unit vectors from known geometry, right? And then we can apply, we can figure out the direction of a force just by multiplying that unit vector by the magnitude of the force. So I'm assuming you remember how to do the uh, get the unit vector. You can, do not, you can review last lecture, but um, I'm going to go over it again in these sample problems that I'm going to do. So now let's say we had this uh, flagpole here, I guess, vertical rod, and it's got a point A is at the top, and it has two guy wires. One of them goes over to point B. The other one goes over to point C. And we're told what the magnitudes of those forces are, so we know the tensions in those guy wires. They, we want to figure out what is the resultant force, FAC, in Cartesian vector form. So first thing we're going to do is find the, well this one's just asking for FAC, okay. Not the resultant force, but just FAC. So all we're interested in is this 420 Newton force in this particular problem. So we're going to find the position vector that goes from A to C. And we're going to multiply that by 420 and get our answer. So let's do that. Okay, so what do we want? We want our AC, right? We're on A looking at C. Unit, the vector has to go in that direction. So I'm just going to do this by inspection. Now, how far in the x direction do we need to go? We need to go 2 meters, right? So RAC is uh, 2 in the i. How far in the y direction, where we're here, we want to get over here. So that's 3. That's plus 3j. And then we're on A, we want to drop down to the xy plane, so z is minus 6, or k is minus 6. And that's in meters. So now we have a position vector between A and C. Now we want the unit vector 
between A and C. So we're going to need the magnitude of RAC. So RAC magnitude is, of course, you know, 2 squared plus 3 squared plus minus 6 squared. Turns out that is 7 meters. So the unit vector RAC is equal to, we're just going to divide this vector by that magnitude 7. So it's 2 sevenths in the I plus 3 sevenths in the J. Uh, minus six sevenths in the K. Now that's a position, that's a unit vector, so it has no dimensions. Right, because we're dividing, we had meters on top, and we're dividing by meters on the bottom, so the meters cancel out, and that's why, one of the reasons why unit vectors have no dimension. <clears throat> they have length one, remember. So now it's just a simple matter we want FC in Cartesian form, so it's just a simple matter of multiplying the position vector, I mean the unit vector we just calculated by the magnitude of FC. So FC is a vector is you know 420 times that, 2 sevenths I uh, plus 3 sevenths J minus 6 sevenths K. And do the multiplication, and it turns out that uh, this is in Newtons. Uh, it's 120 in the I plus 180 in the J uh, minus 360 in the K. Newtons. So there's F sub C as a vector. Okay, now this one wants the resultant force. It's a similar problem. We have a, a flagpole here and it has a couple of guy wires on it, uh, one between A and B and one between A and C. And we want to know, we know the tensions in those cables. We know FB is 560 and FC is 700. Uh, we want the magnitude and the coordinate direction angles of the resultant force in this case. So we're gonna write FB and FC in Cartesian form just like we did in the previous problem, same procedure. We're going to add them together to get the resultant force, and then we're going to use our knowledge of direction co co uh, co coordinate direction angles to determine the uh, coordinate direction angles, and then we're also going to get the magnitude of the resultant force. Okay, so we're going to need uh, a couple of unit vectors here, right? We're going to need uh, one here, u sub c, and we're going to need one here, u sub b. And just like we did in the last problem, um, I'm going to write out the vector RAB. Because I'm on A, looking at B, right? That is equal to, and I'm just going to do this by inspection. So if I'm on A and I want to get to B in this x direction, I need to go 2 meters. So that's, that's a big, okay, 2i. I'm on A and I want to get to B. Well, how far do I have to go in the Y? Well, it looks like 3, but that's negative 3, right? Positive Y is that way. So minus 3J. And then in the J, uh, Z direction, I need to come down 6 meters. So that's minus 6K. And that's in meters. And likewise, I'm going to write um, RAC. And RAC, I want on A looking at C. So how far in the Y or X direction do I need to go? I need to go 3 meters, so this is 3I. And how far in the Y direction? Well, I need to go 2 meters, and that's positive, 2J. And how far in the Z, the same, is minus 6. So if you do the multiplications, now these are vectors. Uh, the magnitude of RAB, remember when I don't put a line above it, it means it's the magnitude. Sometimes I also do, wow. Uh, I also do uh, R, B, and then put like that. But that's, you see me do that, that's the same as this, right? That's the same as this. So uh, the, uh, Magnitude of those is seven meters. Both of them are AC. 
So now we can get the unit vector between A and B is just, you know, we divide this by 7. 2 sevenths i minus 3 sevenths k minus 6 sevenths k. This is j, sorry. And that's a unit vector, has no, no dimensions. And the unit vector between uh, a and c is this divided by the magnitude. So 3 sevenths in the i plus 2 sevenths in j minus 6 sevenths in the k. Okay, that looks right. 3 sevenths, 2 sevenths plus, so minus, 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 minus. Okay. Uh, so now we can write um, our two forces, FB and FC, in um, Cartesian form. Right? So FAB, I don't know why it does that, but this fixes it. Okay. Um, FAB is a vector is equal to, now it's going to be uh, FB, we were told was 560, right? Yeah, so 560 times the unit vector AB, which is this one right here. So 2 sevenths I minus 3 sevenths J minus 6 sevenths K. Now this is in uh, Newton's. Do the multiplication, you get uh, 160i minus 240j minus 480k. And that's a Newton's. Now I'm running out of room here, but we do the same thing for the other vector, fc. We'll take its magnitude, which was given as 700 Newtons, and we'll multiply it by the uh, position vector between A and C, this one right here. And when you do that, I'll just give you the answer. You get F, uh, B, C is, A, C, sorry, A, C is 300i plus 200j minus 600k. Uh, now we're asked for the resultant force. All we have to do is, is sum, you know, these two forces that we just wrote down in Cartesian form. And I'll do that here. So just trust me with the addition and the addition of those two vectors that it turns out that the resulting vector is uh, 460 in the I. Ah. 460 in the I minus 40J minus 1080k and that is in Newtons. We were asked for the magnitude of FR so FR magnitude, remember you'll put a line above it, is 460 squared plus minus 40 squared plus minus 1080 squared and that comes out to be about 1175 Newtons. So there's one of our answers. The other one was the coordinate direction angles, and if you remember what those are, uh, cosine of alpha is the x component of the force, right, divided by its, um, that's not a vector, uh, the scalar, the x component, which in our case is 460, divided by the magnitude, which is 1175, so divided by fr. So we get alpha is inverse cosine of the x component, 460, divided by the magnitude, 1175. And that's 66.9 degrees. Beta is the inverse cosine of the, wow, uh, y component, which is minus 40. Put that minus sign in there, it's gonna, it's gonna save you because Alpha, beta, gamma, they range between 0 and 180, but if you just let the negative signs do their magic, you don't have to worry about it. This is 92 degrees. And finally, gamma is uh, inverse cosine. You take the z component, which is 1080, divided by 1175, and that's 157 degrees. This is actually negative. Okay, that solves that.
So this concludes the lecture on position vectors and force vector directed along a line. The next video is the end of chapter 2, the vector dot product. See you in cyberspace.